Hunter. I'm Rebecca. I'm Caitlin. Hi, Nessa. This is the Family Show. To now live mega top authoritative of course top 100 definitive. games oh definitive it it's is authoritative, authoritative too whatever <laughs> it's all the things top 100 games of all time amazingness so you ready to rock you ready to rock <laughs> i'm ready to rock man she's, she's wired yeah. i guess that nap did you, you need so to good be, yeah and plus you gotta get wired to do like 100 games like how many like, times do you do that? It's not that fast. Okay, it's not that fast, but it's still a lot of 100 <laughs> games. I still, do we get to talk like the Micro Machine Man? No. Oh. You can if you want. Very disappointing. So, Neutral officially said it's your top 100 list over again, so we don't really need to do it, I guess. <laughs> Welcome to those that have joined. So, here's what's going on tonight. So, we've done this, I think this is the third year? Second year. Third year? Fourth One of those year. years. Third year. Math. Anyway, what I do is I take Rebecca's list, my list, I weight the uh, games based on their rank, mush them together, and we get a list of 100 games. So, uh, so for those that uh, don't know what a weighted average is. What's a weighted <laughs> average, Hunter? The number one game gets 100 points. Ooh. The number 100 game gets one point. Ooh. Add them all together, and then you rank them. Bibbidi Bobby Boo. <laughs> big, big, <laughs> math magic. <laughs> and... Any games below 100 don't get counted, so it doesn't matter that your 101 is a is an important game or not. That doesn't Ordering. count. Doesn't count. Pretty close, but unfortunately, that causes a lot of ties. There's a lot of ties. Okay, so what'd you do? So the way the tiebreakers work are as follows: whichever game is ranked higher on one of our lists. Okay, fair. And if that doesn't break the tie, then Rebecca wins the tie because she's more important than I am. Oh, that's not true. It's adorable, though. <laughs> so, there you go. So, th what's going to happen, there's going to be a, uh, a scroll, like a uh, end credits kind of scroll of all the games. Um, and we'll talk about them as we go. 35 minutes nonstop of hearing us yammer about games. Not necessarily nonstop. There's little gaps between each 10. Meh. To give us a break. We'll fill a gap. We won't be answering questions, although we do have the chat up where we can see it here. That's why I tested the chat earlier. I got a little iPad thing going on down you here. You would not believe chat. this ridiculous setup. I should have taken a picture of this nonsense. So Four screens going so on. We, will, we probably won't ask answer questions as we go, but we might, maybe, if we have time. Mm -hmm. um, Afterwards we could. The way it's going to work, because Re Rebecca didn't even know this, I didn't even tell her this, whoever's ranked the game the highest is the main speaker. What? Now you tell me this. I thought we were doing like every other person. No, whoever, because there's sections where we are, one person's like the like talks like five or ten games in a row. It's hilarious. But anyway, the other did you color code this nonsense? No, you have to look at it and do math. I'm oh, like, I want to see what you. is this garbage <laughs> math? <laughs> so, but yeah, no, your rank is in orange, mine's in green. Oh, okay. The, the overall rank is in yellow. So yes, you can see pretty easily who's is who's. Okay. And you, hopefully you know. So it. whatever number's lowest is the person that should talk. Correct. Good grief. Okay. The other person can chime in and make fun of their choices, but... What? Uh, um, it's our list. You can't make fun of our... This is our list. Yeah, but some of your it's games like are on the list that I didn't rank in my top 100. So? Well, we're going to hear about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? So, that's it. So, hopefully you understood all the rules and, I I and qualifications rules. and quantitations and such. And we'll get started. Here's the list. If you want to preview it, there's, there's all the list right there. Boom. That's really helpful. Thank you. All right, you guys ready? You guys do I ready? Get a list? You no. guys ready? No, I get this on the fly. You get to see Rebecca do this. Just All right, give me a second to get her set up, and we'll get to, so chit chat with people while I get things set up. 
see if there's any uh, warmed up. Any uh, and me, me, me. any people in the in the <laughs> chat asking questions? Are you confused yet? I'm confused. <laughs> Everyone says working perfect for me. Shower song's ready. Right. Let the greatness begin. Yes, thank you, Marcus. All right. Oh, it's hiding behind the mic too, man. You just I asked this if you could. I test. asked if you could see the screen, and you said, oh, I can see You didn't the say, screen. "Is this an unobstructed view of the screen?" You just said, "If I could see you it." Paid like, for the cheap tickets, you get the obstructed view. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Oh, about to have some technical difficulties. Hmm. I wonder why that isn't. Oh, why isn't that? Because you didn't hit play. <laughs> but it should. That go away pretty quick. There you go. Right, okay. Now it's gone. All right. We are just about ready to go, folks. It looks pretty. I should have. I got. I, I, I didn't get. I didn't feel prepared. I didn't get it something to drink. Oh my goodness! You left the feed. You left the feed. You're supposed to be chit chatting with people. I'm gonna be doing that for 35 minutes straight. You people should be ready. <laughs> so, huh? Off the cuff, everything left and right. Sorry, like, I, I need, what's gonna I, happen? I, I, need, if you I need a glass of water in case coffee. I get a bit thirsty. Folgers crystals. Next, I'll find out I'm drinking decaf. It's on the screen. That's on. The screen. I, I, All right, here we go, folks. Here we go. All right, it's on. Ready? Yes. It is on. Bathroom it's break. A, it's about to start. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. The fun anymore. is about to start. All right, bring it. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Do I read the title? You can if you want. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'll read the title. Here we go, and we're off. Check this action out. The definitive 2019 top 100 games of all time. <laughs> oh, that's me. Number 100. Finca, a game that Hunter truly does not appreciate. <laughs> this game is all about collecting different bits of fruit and collecting those in certain quantities so that you can fulfill contracts and therefore earn victory points. Eh. The Resistance. <laughs> now, this is a much better game. What? Social deduction game. You're teams. So you got the good guys and the bad guys. The good guys are whatever team you're on. You're mm. trying to figure out who your teammates are mm. and have your team win. Amazing. Man. It's like it's like one of the old school But it's not as good as Azul, which is number 98, which is a tile laying game as you are literally laying out some beautiful mosaics. You don't want them to break and you have to do them in certain combinations in order to get the best victory points. Lovely, lovely game. Wits and Wagers. Hmm. It's a trivia game. It's quite good. Coupled with a bidding gambling game. What more do you need? That's true. That's it. You know what? I think you spent so little time on that. Now I have to wait. Slacka for number 96 Azul stained glass of Sintra. More of the same beauty, except this time it's stained glass and they look more like cough drops or something instead. Um, but you're putting those out and you're using slightly different mechanisms. Very lovely. Lovely game. I like it. Brass Lancashire. The original Brass reprinted in a beautiful Roxley Games edition. It's a uh, heavy Euro game where you're uh, doing deliveries and building tracks and all sorts of area control and fun stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Number 94 is Five Tribes. This is one of those quintessential games where everyone says, do not play this if you have analysis paralysis. There's literally thousands of choices with this game. Love it. So many things to do. You need to play it if you haven't already. 1846. My first 18xx game I played. It's a lovely year. And my favorite 18xx game. That's mm. why it's on this list. It's a stock trading, company buy-in, bankrupting, cutthroat, mean, heavy wow. Euro game. Mm. So Not tell us about the gallerist, slacker. It's me again! <laughs> The Gallerist. So this is the Tall Lacerda game. You are a curator of a art museum. You're collecting art. You're you're hiring artists. You're tr tricking people to come into your museum. Heavy Euro game. Gallerist. And number ninety one, sir. Merlin. This is a uh, uh, Stefan Feld game. <laughs> it's got a kind of a rondelle thing where you're rolling dice and moving, kind of roll and move around Take a names. board to take different actions, and it's just point salad goodness. Ooh, I like salad. And we get a little bit of a break. Oh, we get a break? Oh. No, you don't. It's Pit. Hey! Ding, ding, ding. That's yours, sucker. Pit. Drink. Pit has been around for like 100 over 100 years. It is a real-time auction, like stock market trading game. Very simple game. I can teach it in like two minutes. Um, crazy madness screaming. Yeah, no more time for that because it's time for Target! One of the great two-player go-to games. This is one about choices where you have to do put your meeples down and where they intersect you get a bunch of goodies and stuff and you're trying to also lay out some tiles to get maximized bonus points. Fun game. 
This is you. Oh, hey! Battle of the Five Armies! Shocking. This is a little bit of Lord of the Rings fight, fight, fight in a box. It is all the battle-ness without all the political nonsense. And beautiful miniatures, little taste of Tolkien in your life. Mission Red Planet, it is uh, it's the second edition of the game. It's a beautiful version of the game. It's a simultaneous action selection game with area control and hidden information. A lot of fun. Wow. Sped that up a little bit. Key Forge number 86. Can you get a ridiculous deck with random crazy names? Yes, you can. And they're ready to go, so you can just unpack it, throw it down, and play a nice, fun, like, little CCG type game. Really awesome game. Yokohama! This is a what I would consider a mid to heavy Euro game. Most would probably consider it a heavy, heavy Euro game. It's got a, a cool movement mechanism where you put out little assistants and your little main guy, your fancy pants guy, moves along and does actions in different areas. Hey, you're next. Architects again. Architects! The West Keithing games, I'm loving them. Architects is the first one, and I really enjoyed it. Worker placement. Got cool mechanism. The more meeples you put at a spot, the more powerful that action is. Not too shabby, sir. Number 83 is Gentes. Or Gentes. Gentes. Whatever. Latin, it's Gentes. Go with it. Anyway, you people. the entire time I know, the game. but it's a good game. And one of my favorite parts has a cool little like tug of war mechanism going on with the people that you can use. Number 82, Ugg Tech. This is a great game. I wish I had the club right now because I'd show you how it worked. You knock people upside the head as your only means of communication to build a project. Oh, hey, look at me. It's number 81. Roll for the galaxy. I'm shocked I beat you with this. <laughs> it is Race for the Galaxy, but with dice. Gives you a little bit more options. There's a lot more opportunities for you to manipulate those dice so that you can choose one action or maybe two to get done during your turn and build up a bunch of different things for victory points. Booyah! It's you again. Hey, look at this. Number 80 is Ray Colt. Do you like farms? <laughs> Do you like vegetables? If so, this game might be for you. Uwe Rosenberg decides to do it again by doing another vegetable game. But hey, what can you say? They're pretty and they're cool. So Daryl Confluence, this is like Pit, the heavy Euro space game. You're collecting uh, all kinds of different uh, resources. You're using those resources to run them through generators and it spits out other resources. The problem is the resources you need, you don't have, so you got to get them from other people. Boom. Hey, this is you. Me, Sheriff of Nottingham, another, I guess this is more of a... Yeah, it's a social deduction game. It's a bluffing game. You're basically putting items in a bag, and you give the bag over to a person. They, you tell them what's in the bag, and they guess whether you're telling the truth or not. Oh, me again. Dominant Species. This is one of the older worker placement games. I don't know if it's the oldest, but it's one of the first ones. It's a massive, it's heavy ready. Euro game with a cutthroat area control uh, thing going on. Yeah, because my birds eat your spiders. Just saying. They do. They do. This is you, too. Altiplano! This what? is uh, the kind of the sequel to Orleans in a way. It's a uh, resource management. You're pulling uh, tokens out of the bag. You put those tokens on your little board to do different actions all over the place. Um, there you go. There you go. Trick, carry on, heavy Euro game. You're a magician. And it's very thematic, contrary to what Rebecca says. A great thematic heavy Euro game where you put it on performances for victory points. Wait till you see what I can do with a stick and a thing of glass. Woo! Why does it say Ray Colt? That should be Shadows Over Camelot. Oh, boom! Somebody screwed oh, up. Oh, no! So it's a Shadows Over Camelot. That's <laughs> supposed to be Shadows Over Camelot. Shadows Over Camelot is another uh, social deduction game with a potential hidden traitor going to different areas of boards, performing different actions. Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> another social deduction game. This one's a heavier game. It's in space. If you know the show, it's a lot like the show, and you throw people out of airlocks. It's true. To me again. Yeah. Yeah, but this it's is like all a you. Village. It's Village all is you. a what I would consider a midweight Euro game. It's a cube pusher. You're collecting cubes. You're using those cubes to take different actions on the board in order to get lots of victory points. There you go. And That's then, true. I told you there's going to be a lot in a row for some people. Spyfall. Another social deduction game. One person is a spy. Has no idea where everyone is. You're asking questions to try to figure out who the spy is while the spy is trying to figure out where everyone else is. Done. <laughs> Chat's, chat's shocked. I don't, know, I don't think they know what's going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Number 70, I come back with a splash with Detective. If you want to immerse yourself in, like, NCIS or Real Detective's office or something, this feels like you're going in and actually solving a case. It is a blasty blast. Next one is Race for the Galaxy. Number 69 is the one that started it all. It is with cards. 
and little tile thingies. You're placing the, the cards trying to get a specific action. If you do the action, you get all the bonus stuff, and you're going to build up tiles that give you victory Poor, points. Really, Puerto Rico started it all. No, Race for the Galaxy started Roll for the Galaxy. Don't, don't. Raccoon don't, Tycoon, this is a, race raccoon tycoon almost, time, almost a family weight. Maybe <laughs> it is a family weight, uh, stock, uh, kind of a stock market resource management thing. Uh, economy, economic oh, game. Oh, heavy hit. And go right from uh, from a light economic game to one of the heaviest economic games at Arkwright. Um, it's got Monster. supply and demand. You have your your different machineries get old and inefficient, and it's crazy heavy Euro game. Amazingly addictive, though. All right, the networks. If you want to have a medium heavy game that is all about putting TV shows in the correct time slots for the massive amounts of viewers, aka victory points, with cheesy little goofy spoofs off of popular shows and actors networks is for you next up is antiquity Tubby! antiquity is a uh, splatter game where you're uh, just downtrodden and beaten down and you're beaten <laughs> down some more and you try to survive he's not wrong he's not wrong <laughs> He's not wrong. Oh, hey, more heavy games. Through the ages, a new story of civilization. This is kind of a Civ game, but you kind of take away the, the map and you know, the, the area control part of the game, and it's more about uh, being efficient with your engine creating resources. Ooh, and then you go from that to a pretty, pretty, pretty game, Yamatai. This is also akin to uh, Five Tribes, except you have beautiful little boats, and you get to do special things on your turn, build out little boat trails, or do a certain kind of combination to get a bunch of stuff for victory points. It's lovely. Oh my, Reavers of Midgard. That's right, you hadn't played it yet. You like Champions of Midgard? Here's Reavers of Midgard. It's kind of like Champions a little bit lighter. Oh, it's so good. Not as good. A little more streamlined. Not as good. A little bit better. Just saying. Clans of Caledonia. We haven't played this one in a while. This one, this one has a lot of things to like. It has contracts you're trying it's to fill. It has a, a resource board that, that, that goes up and down as you buy and sell. That's right. Uh, it's got some area control. Lots of cool things going yep. on. Greatness. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is number 60, Mystic Veil. Card crafting where you are building not only your deck but your cards themselves you can get different things to add combinations and all sorts of goody goodness in other words it's a regular card game a deck builder but with that extra kick to it and you do different things of course to build up and get victory points you have to be quick you, you oh use, hey you gugong use, use half a gugong's time i have half a gugong it's so fast, goo is not here, goo gone. Yeah, it okay. is gone because your time's up. Oh, Rahas of the Ganji. That's Gugon's actually a, me. A midway hero. That's Rah actually me. Oh, it's you. Go it for is it. me. You have two different, uh, the thing with that's neat about this one is you have two different uh, victory, point, victory tra point tracks. Money and they have and to intersect in order points. for you to get the victory on that one. Food Chain Magnate, another splatter game. This is, I believe, my favorite splatter game. I'm um, pretty sure it is. Uh, you're a restauranteer. You're basically doing all sorts of you're producing goods. You're trying to sell to people, and there's lots of kind of relevant where you are to them, whether you sell or not. It's pretty good. 56 is The Pursuit of Happiness. It is the game of life, but for gamers, so you have a nice medium weight game where you're going out and living your best life, collecting all the things, doing all the stuff, having jobs, hopefully not working yourself to death. Cavern of the Cave Farmers is a Uve game. It is a worker placement game. It has a cool mechanism where you have these little kind of workers that you level up that you can send on adventures to get resources. As they get more powerful, they get to get better and better things. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Number 54 is Forum Trianum, and that is a Stefan Feld game that kind of is reminiscent of Trajan. A lot lighter, I would say. Very good, though, and strangely addictive. I want to play it right now. It's good stuff. Oh, hey, and we're bopping right into 53 is Star Realms. Talk about deck builders earlier. This one is teeny tiny little deck. It's got ton, but it has tons of expansions now. All in space. I love this game. It's perfect to throw down anywhere. It doesn't take up much time whatsoever. And then you've got At the Gates of Loyang. Do you like vegetables? Uve's back, and he's at it again with more <laughs> vegetable point salady goodness. Ray Colt, he the heavy version of Ray Colt. Basically. Yeah, it basically is, and it's so much fun, too. And it's, it's different mechanisms. Wow, and then 51. I would love to say a million things about this game, except that it's insanely awesome. You need to go play it. I saw somebody in the chat already mentioned something about playing it, and I really wish that people would just finish playing it already so we can talk about the spoilers. Okay. That's all I can say about that because it's that good it's and I don't spoil game. it. Mm -hmm. It's a great game. It's a it would it would be you did time. not what you put were half oh no oh no <laughs> what 
Are we living on a prayer? <laughs> Did you put that? Whoa! Halfway there! Whoa! <laughs> T.O.T. Wakan! So anyway, it's, not, it's a heavy Euro game. It's got kind of the whole big giant board as a rondelle. You're moving around the board. You're taking different actions depending on where you are. Your workers are dice, and you can level up your dice to make them more powerful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yes. 49, the Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Oh, hey, I forgot, I forgot we got of... longer. We got longer now to do things now that we're in the top 50. Do we? Yes. Sweet. Well, this one, you've got crazy shaped rooms and stuff, and that Mad King Ludwig, he wants you to build it all, but you got to be careful because... There are some detriments to having them matched up a certain ways because, like, you don't want to put your bedroom right next to the concert hall. Just saying. A little crazy. It's a lot of fun, though. 48 Telestrations is probably the only time I've ever laughed so hard that I got a cramp in my side. <laughs> this game is telephone but with pictures, and it is amazing. And anyone can play it. You can teach someone to play this game in literally 30 seconds. It is fantastic. I highly recommend it for family and friends. Lisboa, another hey. Vital Lacerda game. This one is in the country of Portugal. Portugal. It's and, Lisbon. Come and on, man. They had a, a, a earthquake and a tsunami and a fire that destroyed their city, and you're basically one and of the how? nobles rebuilding the city. You basically use the rubble. You collect the rubble of the city to make your, your buildings. It's really cool. Ooh, Mercator, number 46. This game is greatness. It's Uve, if I remember correctly, right? This is Uve, too? But it has kind of a feldish point salad feel to it to me, like all the different stuff you get to go and do with it. Really love this game. It's addictive. And number 45 the is... The only person in the U.S. that like. That I don't know what game. is wrong with you people. It's not <laughs> like I'm saying the earth is flat. Orleans Stories is fantastico, okay? And it's just giving you a purpose to all the aimless, crazy shenanigans that you do in Orleans. It's fun for something different. I enjoy <laughs> it. I will play it all the time. I ignore the haters. 44 Concordia, the most bland, weird, random cover ever. Most famous one, I think. And... You're trading in the Mediterranean. And it's actually a really good trading in the Mediterranean game. I highly recommend it if you haven't played it before. If nothing else, just to know what all the buzz was about with Concordia. All right. Castles of Burgundy. Stefan Feld. This is the one I always tell people that should be their first Stefan Feld game. It was our first game. And now we have a whole wall of Stefan Feld games. So that's probably all you need to know about Castles of Burgundy. And I'll wait a few seconds to talk about the crappy fact that you have have champions of midgard on your top 100 <laughs> champion midgard one of the best games of all time it is worker placement with dice combat it's got all sorts of hidden goals hidden you know, information with the expansion crazy it's really fun good. game it's good it's good so so that was the last game that was that's not on both of our lists so i'm proposing i'm proposing you are i thought we we're already married a resolution of playing all the games in the top 41 Ooh, in the next like year. Okay, sounds good. 41 Pillars of the Earth. This is one of the prettiest worker placement games that we have because the board is absolutely gorgeous and functional. And I really like the way they have the first player mechanism versus all how to get resources. Everything's a little bit slightly different using meeples and whatnot. And you want to do what now? You said... We're going to play the top 41. All The game the games that are on both our lists. Did so you not learn, though, last year about this whole... Like, Don't matter. We're doing it. Oh, my gosh. You're supposed to be talking about Istanbul. No, it's Constantinople. Number 40 <coughs> is Istanbul, and this is another one of those fun games around the weight <clears throat> of Orléans and whatnot, where you have a board that... Oh, no! Lords of Hell. Istanbul's a great it. game. Lords of Hell. <laughs> <laughs> is an attacky... Hello! Uh, <laughs> Choking. It's a tacky <clears throat> Euro <throat> game uh, that <clears throat> has four different ma- ways to win. They're all very different and all completely viable. It's a really fun game. If you like Dudes on the Map, this is a great game. Actually, I don't, I'm not crazy about Dudes on the Map, and I like that game. Blood Rage, that's all you, babe. Blood Rage. This is the, uh, I guess this is probably our first Eric Lane game. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So Blood Rage is another one. Dudes on the Map game. It's got uh, area control, card drafting. It's got euro <laughs> elements, but it's mainly uh, attacky. So mm-hmm. attacky Euro. Euro-y mm-hmm. attacky? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. Oh, yeah. This is yours, shockingly. Oh, no. my It's off the edge of the screen. It's oh. You. Time's up. Title Recall. This is That's one funny. of those great party games where you are trying to get people to guess the names of movies or song titles, book titles, things like that in a charade sort of style, but there's three different rounds where eventually you're down to one-word clues or no. So that's not a number five game. I don't know how that <clears> got there. It got cut out. It's probably 50-something. Yeah. 
Uh, Underwater Cities is yours. Underwater Cities is a great, uh, again, what I consider a midweight Euro game. It's maybe a little heavier than that. It's got uh, it's kind of an action selection kind of game on the board. It's really kind of worker placement. It feels like action selection. That's true. 35 Res Arcana, one of the best games ever. <laughs> and you... <laughs> a little payback? <laughs> maybe. At least I have it on my list. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> There's lots of little elements, and you have, like, this deck pre-made, and you have to do a bunch of stuff and shenanigans and building up your engine so that you can get victory points and win the game. But it's really well done. Merchants and Marauders! This is piratey, sandboxy goodness where you can be a merchant. You can be a marauder. You can be both. You can do whatever you want. It's crazy. Choices are pretty endless, especially if you throw in all those expansions. Pretty wild. Western Legends and Zaya's punitating this game. Pretty wow. hard for wow. me. Wow, that's rough. Or at Labora, Uwe Rosenberg. This is one of his maybe longer, heavier games. Yes. Um, it's got a lot of things going on. It's got a cool resource mechanism where each round, the amount of resources you get, if you take those resources, increases. But when someone does take it, it resets it. So it's kind of a pressure luck how long you want to wait before like you take clock. the resources. It's like a little Really clock. cool game. It's all you. Yido. Yido is a worker, worker placement game. It's a heavy worker placement game. It's got a lot of cool mechanisms. It kind of has phases. One phase, you're kind of doing an auction bidding kind of thing going on, and the next one's kind of a worker placement. It's got an interesting mechanism where a little like police dude moves around, and he causes your actions to not to happen, so you got to predict where he's going to end up. And Le Havre, Le Havre, my favorite Uve game, the best Uve game. I don't care what anyone says, the best Uve game. It's got a kind of worker placement you're building your buildings as you build these buildings it gives you more and more more powerful actions to do as the game goes by and you have to feed your people as always there's nothing on the screen so i will not talk i'm just kidding western legends this better be you <laughs> i forgot my hat Aha! western legends is a sandbox cowboy game where you're going around and you're what you're going around around the different places on the map doing different things you can have poker you can rustle cattle you can rob a train if you have the expansion you can rob the bank you can kill other players well you can kind of wound them it's a fun game <laughs> back to back with the crappy cow game where you got some crappy cows All and the by the end of the game cows. you have some amazing cows you're traveling uh through the board doing kind of worker placement type things to uh deliver your cows to kansas city and get lots of points kansas city it's your two not yet. It's got not popped up yet. Oh man, Macau, <laughs> Macau. So Macau, another <laughs> Stefan Feld game. Not my favorite Stefan Feld game, but one of the best ones. It's uh, got a lot of things going on. The cool thing I like about it is you're kind of drafting these cards. These cards are give you uh, when you build. You have to draft them, and then you have to build them, and then once you build the cards, they give you new actions you can do and makes your makes your engine churn faster. Now we're to the best Stefan Feld game. Oh, what? Oracle of Delphi, the mm. best Stefan Feld game. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> you're on a boat. You're going around and you're doing like 13 different tasks. The first one to complete those tasks and get back to Zeus wins the game. So it's a race. No points. But lots of fun. Yeah, it was interesting that they don't have points in that one. Kind of surprised me. Tapestry. Oh my gosh. This is... Was it Stegmeier Games? Yeah, this is another one of those really smooth civilization games that... I didn't think they'd be able to pull off in the time frame that they have with Civilization. But it has a bit of that feel to it, and it was really well done, and I really enjoyed it. And I'm actually looking forward to playing this again. Very good game. Oh, Age of Empires 3, the Age of Discovery, or just Age of Empires, mm -hmm. Age of Discovery? I don't know. Anyway, it's a worker placement game. It's got a cool mechanism where you put all your workers on this side of the board in order to influence the other side of the board, which is a map that has area control and... Things like that going on on that side, so it's really cool. Smooth worker placement game. Yeah, but forget all that other stuff. You just want to deal with the colonist side of it. The colonist. Now, here's <laughs> another awesome, epic civilization game. We have only done a couple of the eras, and now I want to sit down and just have an epic day of doing these. You can do it in chunks, or you can do it all at once. Awesome game. Awesome game. It's it's kind of custom designed to how long you can play. Lorenzo Il Magnifico. It's that 90-minute sweet spot midweight Euro game. Uh, you're basically kind of drafting cards using dice. You roll dice. These are community dice. You use those dice to draft cards. Those cards go into your tableau, and you're building an engine and building in-game scoring and victory points as you go along. Really cool game. Mm-hmm. That's Me again? You. I rated Core Worlds higher than you. This is crazy. This is not right. <laughs> Core World's a deck builder game in space. So basically you uh, are building up a deck. You're basically increasing the power of your armies to take over planets in order to eventually build up to take over the Core Worlds, which are crazy in-game scoring victory points. Amazing, powerful. And Wingspan. 
Oh my goodness. Live up to the hype. hype, hype. It is a like card laying game, egg laying game, oh, where you dear. also go through and you can fire them off so the things will fire off in combinations. You want to get those, maximize those victory points before the end of the game hits. Gorgeous, gorgeous art. Probably cannot be topped, actually. Now are the crazy good games. Ooh. Rising Sun. This is the, I guess, the pseudo sequel to Blood Rage. It's got a uh, very uh, asymmetrical uh, yeah. plans that are so very, play the game cool. almost completely different from each other. Yes. It's got secret bidding. It's got area control. It's got all sorts of attackiness. It's a really, really fun game. It's really good. I'm in the top 20, so I can talk a lot longer. You got anything to say? Miniatures are crazy good. The miniatures are crazy good. The art's gorgeous. The I, It's insane. It's awesome. Oh, Orleans. I cannot believe how much Rebecca punitated it Orleans. It Orleans She stories. destroyed it. The poor Orleans is crying in the corner and Rebecca punitated it so well, much. It anyway, it's one it. of my all-time favorite games. It's a, a, what most people call a bag building. It's more of a kind of a pseudo deck building game. Yeah. Uh, you're taking different tokens. You're getting those, buying those tokens. You're putting them in your bag. You're pulling them out and you're putting them on your little board to do all sorts of different actions in order to get victory points. <laughs> oh my goodness. Coimbra. It's another one of those <laughs> <laughs> kind of um, pointy salad-ish games. And all of a sudden I just went blank. It's, it's a dice awesome. drafting game. Dice drafting. You draft Thank the you. dice. use those dice to, to basically draft things. cards. Those cards are those used cards to influence ins- your movement on the map board. and different tracks. It's very point salad This Euro is the one game. with the river, too, that has all the crazy good stuff on the river, right? No. Ah, uh, see? I got it confused. No. I'm tired. No. My, my coffee's running no. out. No! Last Road. This is... <laughs> I must play it again. One of Rebecca's favorite. It's kind of probably our... Yes. I think this is our highest rated Uwe on this list co- combined. We both love it quite a bit. It's yeah. very... It's kind of almost Orleans light. It's got some of the same feel. Not Orleans. Uh... Or, or at, at Labora, Labora. Light, uh, it's, it's a it's a quicker version of that yeah. game. It has the same kind of resource manipulation, yep. uh, card drafting. You're building a tableau, very very similar to uh, or at Labora at Labora, but different. Yep, yep, yep. Zaya, Legends of a Drift System. This is my favorite, barely my favorite sandbox game. It's in space. You're going around. Hey, you still like it a little bit better than Western Legends. Yes. So, wow. so you're going around in space. You're traveling around. You're picking up and delivering. You're attacking people. You're doing missions. You're exploring. All sorts of crazy fun stuff. You can be a bad guy. You can be a good guy. You can be both. Just crazy. Just do what you want to do. That's the sandboxing goodness. Hmm. Very good. Very good. And speaking of doing things in space... Let's terraform some Mars. Here you go with the ultimate like awesome deck builder game where you it's not, deck yeah, it's not really a deck builder. Tableau. Tableau builder where you're taking all of your stuff, you've got all these cool cards and you need to combo them and you've got a nice player board where you're building up these engines to get all these different resources so you can go out and actually terraform Mars. Oh, and you get all these great victory points doing that. This is more of you gotta a watch the temperature, you got to watch the water levels to get all of those cards out and too many expansions. Card drafting hand manager. Oh, 14 Crown of Amara. This is a really cool, probably one of my favorite as far as worker project, uh, worker projects, worker placement goes because it's got two different boards for the workers. One's the side where you're actually gathering up the different resources. The other side's what you're going to do with all those crazy wacky resources. Got it. Sudden Link's going to get a message. Okay. I think we're back. Hopefully we're back. Maybe we're back. Possibly we're back. Hmm. Hmm. Top 12 broke the internet. That's the truth. So I assume we were on... Assume Gaia we were, Project. We about to start Dinosaur Island. I don't know if you heard Gaia Project. You it's know, awesome. Go play it. Space <laughs> game. It's space got... Space game tech truth Terra Mystica in space. Heavy. All right. We're going to start it up again. Woo-woo. With Dinosaur Island. All right. That's you. Dinosaur Island. This is crazy fun. It's uh, got... Lots of things going on. You're basically building a dinosaur park. You're getting creating dinosaurs by drafting DNA. You're building different shops. You have hooligans busting into your park. You have dinosaurs breaking out and killing everybody. And the hooligans screaming for their lives and jumping over the fences. Crazy, crazy game. Yeah, that's pretty good. It sums it up pretty well. And then Trajan. We talked about the one of the heaviest Stefan Felds, and it is also one of the great ones. A lot of people think it's kind of a lot of mini games in one. 
Sort of is. Um, different parts of the map. He's trying to control the map. He's trying to control the Senate. He's trying to make sure that people have their bread and their circuses. You're doing all these things together to gain, of course, that point salady greatness that is the sweet, sweet taste of victory. There you go. We're in the top, top ten. ten. In fact, I think I do a little top ten do you? thing. Yeah. Do you live on a prayer again? It gives a Did you pick to, some stupid gives a chance quote? to breathe. Oh, man. Here we go. Hmm. All right. This is way too much breathing. Last time we were like flying through it. No, we took more breaks last time than did we did this time. Yes. Oh, look at us. The only reason we took a break is the stupid... Mm. Suddenly. Top 10. This is crazy. Top. If you haven't played these games, you need to play these games. They're really good. Yeah. Because... Play all the games. Wow. If you like these kinds of games, you are doing yourself a huge disservice by not playing said games. <laughs> The scroll is much slower for these. We have lots and of... And... We have lots now, of... This is you. Amerigo! <laughs> it's number 10. <laughs> Almost sounded like summer there for a second. Okay, so you have a cube tower. The cubes of different colors are the different types of actions. You may drop some in the funky cube. Other cubes are going to go out. What do you get to do on your turn? You don't know until they come out of the tower. Meanwhile, you get to go around in a little boat and explore a bunch of places, and you're kind of Tetrising a bunch of different buildings in that you've built by using one of those colored cubes. It is a very fun game. It's one of my favorite felds, actually. But it's not as good as the best game of all time, which is sorely, sorely punitated by being down at number nine. War of the Rings, it is... Lord of the Rings in a box. You are either the Fellowship or the Shadow Armies. You're either trying to, to get the ring and throw it in Mount Doom, or you're trying to stop them by corrupting mm. the ring bearer and mm -hmm. make him cry and mm -hmm. not go to Mountain Doom. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. great game. It's a great two-player game. It is kind of a bear to learn, but it's worth it. It is very rewarding. It is very Each game is very memorable. Um, it's an experience. Yes. Yes, it is. And then we have Vinos. This is Viticulture times 10. It's very heavy because also it's our boy Lacerda. And then it is doing a lot of the same sorts of things. You're getting different regions. You're going to grow grapes in there and you're going to sell them off of different wine things. But do you want to take them to like a fair? Do you want to sell them off for bitters? Do you want to just like offset them for random victory points to kind of, you know, just bolster your numbers? There's all these different things you get to do. And once again, it's got that elegance of you do a couple things, but then you have tons of repercussions from your choices. Really good game. Really good game. All right. Skithy. Skithy is a great... Uh, Skithy. <laughs> Scythe is an awesome game. If you ever played uh, any kind of real-time simulation computer games, it reminds me a lot of that. You start off like at your home base, and you slowly fan out, taking over areas, collecting resources. You use those resources to build up make yourself more powerful. I uh, like the fact that as you upgrade uh, different abilities, it makes other abilities even more powerful and more efficient and cheaper. Uh, it has encounters that are hilarious. You get to choose like some, a normal thing, a mean thing, and a hilarious thing. Great game. It is pretty good. Whoa, this is you. It is me. What? Deception, Murder, and Hong Kong. My opinion, if you consider this a party game, this is my favorite party game. If you consider this a social deduction game, this is my favorite social deduction game. If you consider it just a flat deduction game, it's my favorite deduction game. It is awesome. You're, you're either a person trying to figure out who the murderer is, or you're the murderer trying to hide your identity. And there's a forensic scientist giving you kind of... Uh, Weird clues, clues to figure to out to, to lead you to the weapon and what was left at the crime to figure out who the murderer is. There you go. Great game. Excellent game. One of the best. I played it again recently. Successful as always. All right. My number five <laughs> is Star Trek Fleet Captains. And this, you get to have some little mini ships of different types, whether you're the Federation, the Klingon Empire. Romulans, whatever, and you're going out and exploring strange new worlds and new civilizations. You're flipping over the tiles as you go and explore them. You can base how long you play the game by how many tiles you lay out so it's adjustable. They have special asymmetrical powers that are incredibly thematic, and when you go and explore the planets, you get different episodes, things that happen. It is like going through one of the episodes that you've probably seen on the shows. Really amazing time. I guess we can Ooh. both talk about this. I'll take it. So, Star Trek Ascendancy, we like this. I like this one better than Fleet Captain. She likes it slightly less than Fleet Captains. It is more of a pulled back version of Star Trek, where you're kind of at the the world galaxy level. You're basically going around and you're taking over different planets, or you're you're 
bringing them into the Federation if you're the good guys. You're attacking other players. You're building up your fleets. You're getting abilities. You're getting <laughs> technologies. It's kind of a 4 x kind of game, um, but with a Star Trek theme um, and every every different race. It has tons of different expansions that are very asymmetrical. Ooh, and Anachrony, another heavy but awesome game where you've got to try to get yourself built up so that you can leave the planet before a giant meteor strikes it. But the cool thing is you can also somehow travel back in time and give yourself supplies. You can't get yourself off the planet somehow with this time travel, but you can send yourself a couple things you can do to build that ship and make it easier for yourself as long as you remember to pay yourself back in the future. Otherwise, you crack the timeline and bad things happen. So, so good. I love the little mechs that they have as extras that you can get for the game so you can actually go out and use those. Twilight Imperium Ooh. 4X Greatness. This is an epic game of... Epicness. Epicness. It is <laughs> It is a massive game. It's got everything. It's got basically building up your fleets, doing techs, trading, negotiation, creating laws, destroying each other, attacking planets for hours and hours and hours of fun. There it is. But the thing about this game is... And hours. Once, you, once you've learned the game and you learn to play it, the thing it, it is it so back. smooth. You care about everyone's turn. It is an awesome, awesome experience. You should try Talks it at least once. Bellum Gloriosum. And number one, the best of the best. Viticulture. It's all right. Oh, <laughs> says Mr. Number Nine. This is the worker placement to end all worker placements. You are getting a bunch of fields, raise a bunch of little grapes. You... Harvest them from the field. You make the wine. You sell the wine all in four lovely seasons as you duke it out with your enemies to get the best places so you can hurry up and fill those orders and get the most victory points before they do because inevitably somebody sneaks in with some kind of cool card that I didn't know about and then all of a sudden they're filling extra orders and whooping me. It's a cutthroat business, that video. All right. <laughs> we are done, folks. <laughs> Woo! We made it. We made it through. So we we're gonna we're gonna, uh, we're gonna take questions. I didn't see too many questions. One thing I did see is that I guess they completely miss Gaia Project. Aww. So we're gonna talk about Jack Gaia Project real quickly. Stupid, suddenly. Real quickly. Talk about Gaia Project again. I'll talk about Gaia Project. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm so talking. so it's a, a it's a a Euro space game. You basically everyone plays a different race. Different races are different at terraforming different planets. You're going out and taking over planets. And you're basically building up uh, different colonies on those planets. You have different kinds of buildings. has a cool mechanism where there's basically it's mana. I don't know what they call it in this game. It's mana and terra, and terra Mystica, but I don't know what's called in space. But basically, it's, it's, yeah. it, you basically have this little pool of mana that's going around and around. And you got to kind of build it where that's super efficient. You don't want to have too much going on because then you're not being efficient. So you want it to make a smooth little transition. A great game. It's really a lot of fun. You totally skipped the tech tree on that. That's oh, the that thing tech I love best about it. Has it has tech trees. Tech tree. It has a bonus really in every round. You have a kind of little mini goals. You have in game goals you're shooting for. Um, if you like Terra Mystica, uh, <laughs> I think is I personally think this version is even better than Terra Mystica. I like how John sums it up. He's like sci fi, sci fi, sci fi. Oh, and wine. And it's like, yeah, it kind of is like that. It's weird. <laughs> but. It, no, the, well, Deception 6, so it's four sci-fis and then Viticulture. Viticulture and TI4 was it's actually a wrong. tie. It was just broken, and, and because Viticulture is her one, and Twilight Imperium is my two. So they, they got Viticulture broke the tie. Look at that. Actually, points-wise, they were the same. Woo! All right, give me a second to, to kind of uh, Space mana. adjust some things. I'm going to put this over here. Ban Tommy. Why am I banning Tommy? I don't know. He's writing in caps. Nonsense. What are you writing caps about? What were I? What was I thinking this year? You uh, know what I was thinking? Play more games. Yeah, she's thinking lighter games. Is what she's thinking. Yes, so. yes. I hope you get a chance to play Gaia, John. It's a really good game. If you like heavier games, oh, it's fantastic. Especially if you like a really cool tech tree. Definitely a heavy game. It's it not is very so. heavy, but it's got. I love I, almost more than the colonizing the space part is the tech tree. I love it because all the different things that you can upgrade on the tree are really good for you and they all have really great benefits it's just like well what do you want to do more of and then you have to kind of follow those tracks best and so it's good i like we had our tradition of the video dying in the middle it happened last year too did it really yeah oh that's nice to see tradition but it took us about 10 minutes to get back up last year Ugh. That's right. I kind of remember We're that. We're kind of scrolling through Ooh. looking for any questions. We're taking questions, uh, so if you want to send us questions, we'll try to answer them. Um, <laughs> Viticulture sci-fi, too. 
Uh, Gardner, yeah, we're not going to be able to go on the cruise next year. It's in February, and that is like a lethal she's, she's, month she's for got, me to go on. Uh, academic competitions. Yeah, my academic competitions start up during that month. So, and it's right at the time of the competition. So, it's Picard the winemaking. Yes, that's true. Yes. So we got. Uh, let's see, new version of Castle Someday, of Burgundy. Yes. yes, there's a new version of Castle of Burgundy out. Tuscany, which is kind of a sequel to Castles of Burgundy is coming out this year from Stefan Feld. Oh, really? It's yeah. called Tuscany? That's kind yeah. of confusing, too. Mm. Um, yeah, Macau. I predicted Macau would come back in print next, last year because that's the 10-year anniversary. I don't know why they didn't take advantage of that. It's a great game. They didn't? Mm -mm. Oh, that's so depressing because that is such a good game. I thought they were doing 10-year anniversary. They were for a while, and I don't know why they stopped. They did Notre Dame and uh, in Year of the Dragon. I'm right. sure they would do Macau. Crazy. Maybe they don't have the rights to it. I don't know. <laughs> Kabuki. Shame on you. <laughs> what? Free COVID-19 with every cruise ticket. <laughs> oh, jeez. Pretty much. My brother. Maracaibo on either list. Yeah, Maracaibo. Oh, that game is going to go up. I guarantee. We played it. that one after we, uh, we, did. we and, made our oh, list. Oh, that's so. a good game. Look for it next year. In fact... So we anyway, anyway, uh, they were making fun of your description of loans in an acronym. It's more than that. You not only do you, if you don't pay back your loan, <laughs> you actually cause paradoxes and anomalies in the game, and it's very detrimental to your to gameplay. So it's not just like <laughs> if you don't pay it, you like you owe interest or something. Like no, 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 it's bad. Bad, bad things. I said happen. it broke the time space continuum. Yes, basically, that's what it is. You basically, make fun of me. You don't send it back, then how'd you get the resource in the first place? So that's that's the, where that's the right. paradox comes from. Oh, uh, Hunter's hooked on The Expanse yet. I've seen a couple episodes here and there. I just started watching it. I really enjoy it. So I don't know who's, I guess, is that the same person that suggested it? I don't remember who uh, suggested it to John? You. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was John. Yeah, yeah. I, I've watched uh, nine been, episodes, and I'm addicted it. to it. Every time I have free time, I'm, I'm watching an episode. I just don't have a lot of free time to, to yep. watch. Thank you, Nathaniel. Someone was set, and I just was starting to catch up on the Picard comments. Yes, he's in Burgundy. France people. Come on now. Don't you remember our English actor in France? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, uh, Mercato, Mercator is not on my list. Uh, we only played it once. Rebecca just loved it. It's puzzly, and I'm not a super puzzly fan, so I, maybe if I play it again, it'll, it'll improve think, for me. Yeah. It was kind of a, sadly, a middle-of-the-road kind of Uwe game for me, so I, I, it didn't really stand out, but I do want to play it again to... to Yep. Get a better feel for it. Tommy, is this the start to a joke, or are you seriously wondering about the mailman and COVID-19? Because I'm concerned. It sounds like a line to a joke somehow. I don't know. I'm like, why wasn't the mailman worried about going down? I don't know. He probably is. All right. Sprays that stuff down. It's just like flu. So where just are we at? How long have we been going? What keep clean. Okay. So, um... We'll continue to take questions. I just want to go ahead and, and move on to um, a couple of things. It was a joke. Oh, ban Tommy. What did he say? He's a carrier. Oh. Ugh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, next week, next Tuesday, again, continue to ask questions. We'll answer questions. Uh, next Tuesday for Tommy. is another great calling of games. It's next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. I'm going to make a list of 50 games. What? 50 games. You are insane. And we're going to vote. We got, I'll tell you what we're going to... We got little votey bits. Oh, I know what I'm getting rid of. We got a little votey. I have to make one. We lost one of votey bits. We're going to basically vote... I think the dog ate it. Cole or keep. So basically, we're... I'm oh, gonna, we're, man. We're, we're going we're, uh, we're to have a list of games. The game, we're going to put the game up on the screen. Or actually, we, we, I may just set them out. But anyway, I don't know which. Oh, There's 50 man. games. I'll probably put it on the screen. Or maybe we'll just talk about it. And then we're going to say... We're going to talk, give our piece. And then we're going to vote... And if we both vote Cull, it's gone. If we both vote Keep, Champions it stays. of Midgard. If we Champions of Midgard. If we have a <laughs> a mixed vote, the one has to convince the other, otherwise we keep. The Who color, breaks ties? The color, I break the ties, the David. Color, <laughs> the color has to convince the keeper to get rid of it. The color has to convince the keeper to get rid of it. Yeah, good luck with that, sucker. I don't know what you're going to call right now. Let's see. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Western Legends. Carson City. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you just going around across Great Western the... Trail. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. You, you like those games, too, you <laughs> dork. 
Tommy is not breaking So that's, ne that's no, next, that's next Tuesday, the great calling of games. The reason I'm doing this, leading into my next thing I want to talk about, assuming BGG Spring is going to happen, be on. assuming it's going to happen, the, the, the BGG people said they don't plan to cancel the conventions, but who knows. Assuming BGG Spring's on, we're, I'm going to do another selling off of, of games at the virtual flea market. Fun. And we'll have our meetup. There'll be Perel there. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll do our annual family showdown meetup the door. there. Spraying people. <laughs> Just lice all them as they walk in. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> so bad. From afar. But I have uh, I, I have probably 30-ish games, including Tommy's copy of Detective, ready to get cold. <laughs> and then we'll add whatever we, we vote for during the Great Calling 2. Great going too. <laughs> I grew up in the West. It's it's overrated. No, I'm just kidding, John. <laughs> he said, "What did the West do to you?" I was just picking games I knew Hunter liked. <laughs> oh, she kind of went across the top. I did. I just kind of went across. I'm like, Hunter likes that game a lot. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna call them all. Call everything except our top 100. That'd be about. I, I think the number I looked at is like 100. If we combine both of our lists, it's like 149 games. Ouch. That would suck. We're going to have to get rid of about 250 games. That, nope. 300 games nope. to get there. Not happening. <laughs> Just because it's not in my top 100 does not mean it's a bad game, sir. Will I play your Doom? No, your Doom is going to be cold. It'll be sold. That game is bad. I don't care what you doomed? say, Tommy. That game, What's you're, doomed? we're doomed or whatever it's called. Are you talking about the Captain? The no, Captain's we're doomed. Thing? It's that weird game where you're... Oh, I haven't played that. Real-time game. I haven't played that the yet. The only reason I'd keep that is to throw it in the trash and keep the timer. I just miss We're something. doomed is well, bad. I haven't even played it to say it's bad. I guess you better play that here before, you know. No, it's bad. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's bad. <laughs> pandemic. Yeah, I'm sure it is. That's hilarious. I thought about doing a pandemic marathon live, but Hunter axed my idea. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I get haters on. You take this seriously. Hey, you know what? If we're all going to die, I'm going to have fun doing it. Gosh darn it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say. I laugh. I, don't, yeah, I got nothing. It, that's all I have. That's need, all I have. You need, you need a modicum of seriousness about it, but you don't need the mass panic that's Thank happening. You. So we might as well play a live stream. Maximize that. Like I said, if he's getting spikes, all these getting spikes. Think of all the views we get then, because everyone would be like, "Pandemic live? What is this?" <laughs> oh, we have been but, no you, bamboozled yeah, you, you into watching those, those fake titles. Pandemic out of control. Yes! Live on TV. <laughs> yes! You saw it here first, folks. You know. Oh, my what goodness. Are they, what do they call those where they trick you into clicking? Clickbait. Clickbait. Yeah. We're clickbait now? Yeah, yeah click, that's we'll it. Clickbait a, oh, a pandemic man. live stream. Everyone else is doing it. Yeah, we had a, a case, since we're talking about it, sub, subtly, subtly about it, kind of indirectly, but uh, we actually Pretty had a direct. case pop up just a few miles from us. Yeah. So. They're isolated, whatever. Yeah. We're healthy. They're quarantined. Yep. So, welcome to Texas. Everything's going to be, you know, moving to Texas. Came from California. Figures. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's a... For those of you that don't know what the deal is, everybody in Texas always complain about the Californians moving to Texas, blah, blah, blah. So, it's... They brought their... They brought their Corona with, with them. them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were just visiting. It was people... They were Texans visiting California, whatever. Anyways, it's just funny. So we're looking forward to BGG Spring. I hope, I hope it's one of our favorite conventions. It is. So I hope it actually happens. I hope it does too. I think it's far enough in the future this is going to die down by then. And well, no, the rumor is that two to three months out is when it's going to be the craziest. Oh, really? Yes. Is that the new? Oh, that's a new fun. Yeah. Avoid the news for one day and look what happens. But yeah, the uh, I'm hoping that's not the case because it really is fun. We usually have both of the girls with us, and they like to, you know come and hang out with you guys that come and do the meetup with us and play games and do all that stuff. So if it does run, definitely come by. Um, don't be too shy to come in. Um, we won't call you out or anything. If you happen to walk in late, you can just come in and sneak a spot <laughs> and come in and join the games and stuff with us. It's a lot of fun. Like you said, we'll be Lysoling you at the door. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, it'd be a, it'd be a lot of fun. Um, I hope. Oh, gosh. It seems so far into the future. Gosh, I'm thinking now of all the stuff that's up in the air because of that, if it's that Yeah, I haven't out. even booked our summer vacation yet. Well, and I've got a conference right when school gets out. I wonder if we're going to have it now. In L.A.? Yeah. yeah I'm like, 
the, th- it, the thing about it is that a lot. It's, it's interesting, man. I don't know how we got on this. I guess that's I don't what know, everybody's yeah. talking it's about. Real, yeah, yeah. But uh, a lot of these big events are not canceling. They're, the state is canceling them. Oh. And the reason they do in, do that so that they can get their insurance for the event. If they cancel the event, they don't get their money. But if the state cancels it, then they get their refund. So, oh, really? So the state is one. The, the states are the ones canceling a lot of these major wow. events. It's not the events themselves. So. But I'm sure they're going. They're going to the state and say, "Please cancel our event." Oh, I, I guess I don't know. Now is when you book stuff. It's cheap. That's true, Tommy. It is our, our summer That's trip. It, the the airfare is about half what oh it was my gosh. two months but, ago. But then, but, then, but but unless you spend crazy money, most airlines won't refund your tickets. So it's a big risk. So I, I don't know what to do at this point. Man, it better not to go too far out because gosh darn it, I'm excited to go to Dice Tower with you finally for the I first know. time. And it seems like forever. I so. Know. <laughs> top 10 ga- outbreak Steam. games. Outbreak games. <laughs> I'm telling you, if we have to, I already told my kids, I'm like, listen, we cancel school. I'm already prepared. I already know the YouTube thing. I'm just going to put all my yeah, classes I online. Saw, They're not getting out of class. I, I saw. I nice saw, try, suckers. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a meme today that showed it's like, you know, being quarantined, it says normal people and everybody's like... <laughs> And it says gamers, and I'm like, yeah! Because yeah. <laughs> I was like, I think we've got enough to do if we have to stay home. Quarantine me for months, I don't care. <laughs> I'm good. It's like forced to play my games. But yeah, hey, so, you know, stuck up on not, you know, the panicky stuff. Stuck up on the stuff that entertains you. There you go. Yeah, I want to go to Gen Con for the first time, and I'm like, I don't know, do I book that? I just don't know. Yeah. It's so It's so weird. It is weird. A big event was uh, uh, canceled in Ohio. Which, was it? Hmm. Which is like right next door. So I don't know. I yeah, don't know we'll see, on. guys. But yeah, it's up in the air. But keep an eye on it because if you do get to go, we'd love, love, love to see you. That would be. A I lot usually fun. throw like crappy games away at the at the meetup that you could potentially crappy get. games. <laughs> um, some of those games any, were any, definitively any, not. Crappy, Any games that don't way. sell for the price I consider reasonable at the virtual flea market. Then all of a sudden they're free! They're and you're free. like, free. Like, like, I can get $5 for this $40 game or I can give it away <laughs> and give someone yeah. a nice, you know, someone a nice oh, game. Oh, you want to know about the toilet paper thing? I heard one of the, the, the things that was flying around is you can make a makeshift face mask out of toilet paper and that's why there's a run on toilet paper. Good Lord, people, calm down. It was funny. I saw it. We were, Rebecca, I went to lunch with Rebecca today, and we were driving back, and there was a crowd of people, like four or five people, walking back from a pharmacy that's right next to my building to his with bags office. full of toilet paper. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? I just, oh, it just makes me ill. Anyway, calm down, people. I guess, I guess you don't want to run out of toilet paper if you get quarantined. Amazon Prime, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is their time. Are you kidding me? You don't need to worry about the store. You're just like, send me a drone with some toilet paper. Eep. There you go. <laughs> All right, folks. Technology is wonderful. 58 <laughs> minutes. We're going to call it good before we lose the internet again. Yeah, I don't trust the internet. So next week again, the great calling. Oh next my gosh, week, that's what's killing me. We're going to call some games. I'm going to make that a list stupid of calling. Like 50 games and we're going to go through them. I don't know what you're thinking. Vote. Oh my goodness. And you guys can weigh in. You can try to influence our decisions. Yes, please influence him on what is he thinking about calling 50 games. We have cubes I mean, open. Not, I, we have cubes I, I, open. You're obsessed. What do you want to buy that you haven't told me about nothing. yet? Nothing. Uh, that was a little quick. He was they, a little quick to answer no, that. No, there's nothing. Mm-hmm. That's in Gen Con's coming up. Anyway. <laughs> <David>. um, <laughs> He's playing stockpile for reals. <laughs> New. <laughs> New. <laughs> Poor. So... So yeah, we're gonna call some games. I basically, I, I don't expect we're gonna call fifty. I think maybe no, we're not. I'm thinking maybe twenty ish will come out of that voting. Twenty ish, twenty ish. There's gonna be some kids games in there too, and things like that. Just saying. Call on stories. <laughs> wow. Okay, Jobby. Well, well that's here. a that's a great one. That's a great great one coming up. So, no, it's not calling all on stories. Here's the thing. It's such a bomb. The general reception of it solo, I suspect there's not going to be no st- more stories for it. That makes me sad. That's what my gut says. Unless they're already re- already made and ready understand. to go. Why do people hate it? I don't spe- expect there to All be right. more stories Any for it. Any of you played it, why do you hate it? Because it railroads you into your decision-making process. 
it takes it's kind not, of a kind of an open game that you can do what you want to say you have to do this, 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 and this. You don't have to play yes. with all of it either. I mean, like no, you have a list of tasks yeah, you have to perform. Yeah. But you you can't do if you do anything outside of those tasks, you're being inefficient. So it's, it gives you a list. You oh, got, you just you, like you, the open game of it. Yes, that's okay. what most people say that, that you can choose what you want to do. Well, that's just um, that's funny because I I really enjoyed that. I liked having something yeah. to do because before it's literally wide open. It's just like all right. You uh, know, I mean, most people like basically having a. And I love Orleans. Don't get me wrong, but. You like having a shopping list? I kind of liked the shopping list. Oh, okay. Yeah, There's the, something different to Tom, do with Tom, it. Tom, Tom, uh, Tom Vassell, because she mentioned that Tom Vassell said that he hasn't heard a single person say they liked it. Oh, well, I will send him a message. I, I watched it after a factor. I would have said, Rebecca likes it. You should tell Rebecca. No kidding. I love the stinking <laughs> game. All right. That's all right. I'll go, I'll go Twitter Tom here later and be like, dude, Orleans Stories is where it's at. Okay. And he won't believe me. Because <laughs> all you haters out there... A lot of people haven't played it, though, is the thing. It's, I don't even know if it's officially been released in the U.S. yet. Uh, <sighs> so sad, so sad. What? No, I just, you guys don't appreciate I like the greatness. It. I like of... it. I think Orleans is much better. Not much better. Mm. Somewhat better mm. than mm. stories, but I like stories. I just like the fact that the story makes sense. It's not just a random number, random events that are happening. I like that piece of it, that there's these, these events that make sense. They're, they're a progression. It's not just... You have the plague, and then we have a moment, a, a year of greatness, and then this happens, that happens. It's like there's a, a track, a story track that makes mm. thematic sense of how that's flowing. And it has cooperative things that, that all the players have to work together to kind of get done, or it makes the game harder for everyone. So you have to kind of decide what, what, how much you're going to uh, put towards the, the community kind of goal and work on your own things as well. So. <laughs> Pookie, Leaving like Earth. Broken record, man. She actually mentioned playing it the other day. We just didn't have time yeah. to do it. She yeah. wants to play it. And we'll I play, do. We'll play it eventually. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I heard the play by play while you were playing it. It was hilarious. <laughs> playing oh, playing no! it playing it slightly wrong. No, Neil, what'd you do to me, buddy? <laughs> I was trying that to land is. my landers on Earth instead of splashing them into the he ocean. He was just showing off at that point. He's like, Yeah, we got this. I'm gonna flex a my little landing, bit. Oops. My landing my <laughs> landing ability was horrible, but I was like, Okay guys, we're gonna test our landing whether you need it or not. <laughs> and they're like, Okay, boss. <laughs> Famous All right, let's word. get out of here. Next week, calling, calling, <sighs> getting rid of games. All right, well that was fun, peoples. Nice and random. Lots, Sorry for the technical lots of games. We almost made it. We, almost we did made almost it. make it. Send your hate mail to sudden link. No, just <laughs> <laughs> I already have. Okay, good. All right, well people, take care, stay healthy, and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye. Calling games. Call all the games. Calling me? Are you calling me? I'm out of here.